Hello and welcome to the second part of the WeFlow. We are here, the Women Matters company of the wisdomfactory.net. I'm Heidi in Italy and we have Gertraud from Germany, we have Monia from Austria, we have Victoria and Christine from California and Hanele from South Africa. So I have shortened up a little bit the, the check-in so we have more time for the process. This is the second part. The first part you can uh, watch on, on YouTube and I will set the link underneath. Uh, and I give over to you both, so. <laughs> Okay, so you shortened the first part. And so we can go, yeah, hi everyone, and great to see you um, anew and, and old <laughs> uh, people here. Um, we welcome you to share good news <laughs> or interesting challenges since last time or just today or yesterday. So what is your good news? What do you want to share or interesting challenge? And who wants to start? Starts. Um, I had a good experience uh, due to COVID. Um, my daughter's boyfriend took a road trip while she was here, remained home. And so um, after he returned from his road trip, she felt the need to isolate from him. Um, so she stayed at our house, <laughs> which was great. So we had 11 nights where she slept over and our younger daughter's at home now living with us after college. And our older daughter was home for those 11 days. And I loved it because I easily slipped back into mom mode and uh, just enjoyed being with them. And they're both adults now, so it's, it's very different. I'm not uh, watching their P's and Q's or anything like that, but um, it was lovely to have them both here and it felt you know, very different and yet the same as it did uh, years past. So I loved it, it was good. And today she left. Today was like the 12th day and she decided she could go home and uh, uh, resume her life with her boyfriend. So there it is. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I'm going next. Um, yesterday I was at a big surprise after very two, very two interesting weeks. Um, a dear friend of mine from the UK gifted me with an experience of the big, your big biofield tuning. And we were taught how to write a song and to a melody by two songwriters. And together in the group, we created a whole new song with new lyrics. And everybody's lyrics fit into the bigger song. It was quite an extraordinary experience. Completely unexpected, but such a beautiful um, surprise and to do something different it was just wonderful. You should share it with us sometime. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. <laughs> okay, I go next. I have, um, let's say, innovative technology, the wearables. I have this ring. Where, uh, which is tracking steps and sleep and whatever. And now I also bought a focus band, it's called, where, where it's tracking your uh, brainwave patterns. And I, I'm playing with that and I find it absolutely interesting. I don't really understand it because I try it with different um, brainwave um, music so one should be for alpha, one should be for theta. And it doesn't seem to make a difference. So I don't yet know how actually it, it works, but it's sort of fun. And, and, you know, one is with little fishes, you see them uh, get very yellow when you are, the mind is, I don't know where, and they get low down and slow and dark blue. And that's fun to watch them, like they are blue and then zzz, uh, and then you get them blue again and it's it's a, a toy and i enjoy these 
super hot days to with not doing anything productive. The problem is that my uh, theta and the delta waves are obviously very high, and so I fall asleep almost. So, <laughs> but it's fun. Challenges? Um, no, at the moment, not really. Good. <laughs> Not necessary. <laughs> okay, I continue. Uh, I have been flooded by books, thanks to Amazon. And one was quite unexpected. It's called the Psychedelic Gospels. And it claims that all religion and all spiritual experiences back to the beginning of time were due to uh, uh, psychodentinogens, they call it. So in mushrooms, in, in, in ayahuasca, in, 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 in uh, mushrooms we grow in, in, in Europe. And that was quite fascinating. And I went along and uh, one thing I really like because it's sort of, yeah, it's playful as well, uh, that Santa Claus, that the reindeers use to eat mushrooms. And uh, the shamans noticed, uh, people noticed that and they tried the mushrooms because this reindeer then just stood and looked at the sun or, or uh, yeah, moved around in crazy ways. So this is the origin of how the reindeers fly. And Santa is dressed in red and white like the mushroom, the Amanita muscaria, the, f I don't know what it's in, a toad, toad. Fliegenpilz. Yeah, in, in German it's a Fliegenpilz, yeah. yeah. And uh, <laughs> it's in white and, and you can have that in Christian churches in the, in the frescoes. And this book depicts all the frescoes and they are definitely mushrooms. So today I got another book. It's very thick. Uh, it's called High Weirdness. And it's about three authors of the 70s and how their work was influenced by psychedelics. So I'm doing all my background uh, research. And my daughter is very... Uh, she asked me, should I worry, mommy, that you're asking about uh, uh, fleeing pills? <laughs> I said, if you see one, get it, try it, <laughs> give it to me. But I probably won't eat it. As it's just, yeah. Anyway, that was fun. And the challenge I had was in reading another book on altered uh, mind states. It's called LSD and the Mind of the Universe. Of, and it's written by someone after he retired from university. And he took very high doses and he suffered so much. And it's such a masochistic book. So I'm really, it's not a female way of, of going into these fields. And yeah, this is the challenge I have right now. And I just stopped reading it and thought I'd enjoy the company of women. So that's my state. Can I, can I ask you, uh, Monia, what you found, um, what was your experience that was disturbing as you read it, like as you reflected on the male or female way of doing things? What did you, what were you hoping he would do? Um, well, he himself reflected, looking back, he took 37 trips of high dose LSD. And he said, if he would do it again, which he won't, he would do it in a softer way. So uh, lower dosages or ayahuasca or just something to ground him because he went into an ocean of suffering every time. And then he was uh, propelled into ecstasy and, and the universe. So, the way he did it was for me a very male way just to get to where he wanted to go. And his wife sat him with him for, I don't know, yeah, for not after a couple of years, she really had enough. And because he suffered terribly also bodily while she was there. And, and yeah, they were after they got divorced after some time, but uh, yeah, who wouldn't? 
<laughs> I'm sorry, but yeah, it's. Uh, but anyway, uh, at one point he stayed with her another 40, 17 years because this is what uh, he was told to do, and he he enjoyed that as well. But on the other hand, the woman really was, yeah, she she was quite something. Yeah, she was a psychologist and. Anyway. At least interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you, Victoria. Good news or interesting challenge. You don't have to share interesting challenges if you don't have one. Well, actually, actually, I, I probably should have gone right after Christine. Um, she gave. Can you come a little bit closer to oh, the sorry. microphone? Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. trying to support my back. Um, uh, my, my news is, is um, not as wonderful as Christine's, but, but it's along the same lines, that my daughter, who is uh, still in New York, so unfortunately I haven't seen her for many, many months, uh, she's just finishing up her master's thesis. And um, as is our tradition, she's um, reaching out to me at the very last minute to edit everything. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's both a challenge and a joy. The nice, the, the joy part is um, that it's a fascinating subject and a very profound subject and, um, and she expresses herself very beautifully. So I feel very um, inspired. The, the challenging part, of course, is that it's um, that she always waits to the last minute, so it's very intense. And yesterday, I, I had to get up with the crack of dawn because her um, her advisor's in Berlin, so they have a big time time difference. And um, it's but it's wonderful to be so constantly in contact with her because usually, you know, a text a month or so is about all I get. So. Um, so it's it's really it's it's been really fun to be you know talking to her for you know hours a day potentially so she still isn't finished there's another probably another week to go so it's still a challenge yeah thank you and all the best to her and you <laughs> yeah i know that i i've done it for my three daughters and their boyfriends yeah so oh so, and my goddaughter so oh my goodness I'm you could be a of, professor by now <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I i really get what you mean um my um i had a wonderful encounter this morning we have a stork pair breeding with three kids and they are almost ready <laughs> um, and this morning I did some Qigong with naked feet in the meadows and and this one stock parent was just maybe 10 to 15 meters from me and not bothering at all looked at me and then picked <laughs> so i think i'm i'm going there very often in the morning and somehow i'm i'm just fitting into that into the environment so it was really nice so to to be that close with him or her yeah and i had to call friday saturday i don't know with the producer of a film that um and they want me as a protagonist and so i was kind of oh, what is that conversation going to be like and being a coach knowing how to listen i was really blown away by his listening skills it was amazing <laughs> he is so like opening the space in which I could ponder and and so and and his way of reacting was so smooth and and congruent so I, I was really <laughs> I never met that guy before and and I'm really blown away by it. so I think yeah I, I would love to work with him <laughs> yeah so um, 
maybe you two, Victoria and and Christine. Yeah. What is his name? <laughs> Rebelein. 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 Thank you. Rebelein. Yeah. Um, Bewegte Zeiten <laughs> is his firm. Okay. Thank you. And um, maybe you don't know yet because I don't know, Christine, when you when you were there. Um, I'm I'm just going shortly through the agreements because we already agreed on them, but just to read them out and you make a sign if you are aligned or not. <laughs> um, so there are some principles, some agreements that we were willing to, to go along with. Um, and the basic principles is, are we willing to give people freedom before anything? or ourselves now in the conversation. And uh, you just don't have to do anything specific, just nod or wave or whatever, or shake your head if you don't want to. So I'm going quickly through this, yep. Okay. So, and the micro agreements are, are we inviting the pos possibility of being mind and heart blown in service of integrating of our life? Are we feeling free to sink in present moment awareness? Are we aiming for 100% play? and maximum 69% serious and allow for spontaneous genius and creation. And the last one is, do we offer assumptions as of open questions? So, thank you. After having done this, I have one more question for you. It's what is your current mood and what is your desired mood or mine as well? So just short adjectives <laughs> where I'm now, what do I desire? Current mood, good. Future desired mood, good. <laughs> A little more specific is possible. I'm at peace and my future desired mode is enthusiastic. I'm excited and my future desire is equanimity. Mm. I'm curious and my future design mm. yeah heitere gelassenheit equanimity aber joyful equanimity <laughs> Victoria what's your current mood and what is your desired mood I'm um eagerly anticipating and my future i hope yeah i hope to be joyfully serene mm. my current mood is bubbly <laughs> a little bit <laughs> And my desired mood is uh, joyful. And joyfully taking on the stuff that comes out today. Yeah. So I hand over to Hanali. So in preparation for our manifestation, we are just going to Move a little bit with our bodies as we are sitting. 
in whatever way is comfortable for you. And I'm delighted about all your desired moods because manifestation loves that in my experience, manifestation loves all of these energies. So wherever you are, just gently begin to connect with your body in whatever way that feels comfortable to invite in abundance and generosity in whatever way feels good to you too. Our bodies loves manifesting. We are a manifestation ourselves, so it's not new to us. And as we gently move, let's just smile at our whole body. Just our feet that connect us with the earth, our legs, our hips, our chest, our shoulders, arms and hands. Just smile at them internally or externally. Your head, your scalp, your hair, your face, smile, every part of you. And allow this energy of sense of self-appreciation. And look at your hands. They are our instruments for manifestation. And maybe perhaps gently do a hand dance with each hand. It's like you are directing your own symphony of your vision. You can just imagine this or you can do it yourself, your hands. Your symphony of manifesting and actualizing your vision. Feeling your feet connected to the earth, supported by the earth, nourished. Our feet are our hands that touch the soil and the earth. And rest. In the moment, imagine you are a seed being sown. You are falling into the earth, into the toiled soil, <clears throat> which is oxygenated and fertile and ready for you. And just notice how that might feel to be embraced and enveloped by the earth in this way. Nourished by the sun, and the rain. Everything you need to expand and to shoot up through the soil. And this inner urge to reach up to the sky. Knowing that you contain all the intelligence to manifest your next cycles. Whether it's a seedling or an apple tree or an entire orchid. It's inside of you, blossoming, bearing fruit, this whole process of natural manifestation and actualization. Take a moment to sense into the joy of somebody eating you as an apple, a juicy one, a red one, or a green one, or a yellow one. And the fragrance of apple blossoms. The joy it brings to others, the beauty, yet part of the cycle of manifestation, which is all natural. And you are the seed becoming the apple and the tree and the blossoms. And imagine you are being this tree, your trunk sturdy, the wind blowing through your branches, your roots deep into the earth, rooted, a very healthy root system. Get the flexibility to move with the wind, to dance with the wind. 
and as you dance, you invite in the bees and the flower of the butterflies to come and nourish themselves on your blossoms. Taking the cycle forward, cross-pollinating. All natural to you. And just sends into your body, wherever it is, you feel any movement perhaps, or subtleties. And breathe in to this possibility to be a tree bearing fruit and beautiful blossoms and giving life. And just stay with that for a moment and relax. And relax even more. Be here now. In all your magnificence. And when you're ready, you can gently open your eyes and give over to Kertra. And for this manifestation to arise, we need both complementary harmonious manifestation powers, the feminine and the masculine. And as the in Sanskrit, so in the old languages in, the, in a very old language, they distinguish focus in different energies. So focus for the masculine means hunt the deer. And focus for the feminine means mother nursing her baby or in our words, woman nourishing her projects giving birth and nourishing her projects. And the correspondent hormones is adre adrenaline for the male and oxytocin for the female. Men are better prepared to dealing with adrenaline to go out and fight or hunt the deer. And women are better prepared for oxytocin to create safe environment. And giving our, ourselves the permission to manifest and actualize by connecting to experiencing and celebrating these powerful complementary creation energies. And expert, uh, ex, aspects, <laughs> um, we will give you two different kind of movements and breathing uh, to, to have that at hand when we go forward. The first one is the so-called oxytocin breath that I learned from Ellie Drake. This is the female part. This is the lowering the adrenaline in my system and um, moving up and, and having more oxytocin in my bloodstream. And this breath, um, you can sit or stand as you want. Oh, I think it's, it's good to stand and adjust your, your screen with it. If you don't want to, you don't have to. So I, I put it a little bit more that you see more of me. So oxytocin uh, is generated when we are not breathing up here, but in the belly. So it's important. Adrenaline is like, 
<laughs> it's blowing up the breast and, and, and going forward to action. And oxytocin is for, um, yeah, breathing gently into the, the belly. And you do that by first breathe out really strongly and then let the breath come in gently into your belly. So, and with the next out, out breath, I, you make a sound. It's, it's a H A. <laughs> Ha. Ha. And one more detail is to put up your, the corners of your lip as if you would uh, smile, even if you don't feel like this. <laughs> so just put your uh, lips upward. It's uh, getting endorphins also into your body. So I do it one, one time for myself and then you join in. So it's and do it again. And since you're muted, you can be as loud as you want to. <laughs> <laughs> Lips up <laughs> and in your belly one more time. <laughs> And now we are grounding. This is the dolphin <laughs> energy. And now we get the lioness energy. So feet apart, so shoulder apart. And you're thinking by breathing in, you, you connect to mother earth and take the energy through your feet into your belly. <laughs> my big one here and um, this is like interconnecting with all the capillaries and, and all the nerves and everything that's in the belly so you so the energy from mother earth is connecting to my own energy in here and my own uh, system so breathing in is bringing the the energy from Mother Earth up. And then when we breathe out, we just say that oomph. <laughs> and it's just like UMPF or whatever you, it's, it's like um, oomph. And you can support that with your arms. You breathe in, oomph. And now together. <laughs> So first you breathe out and then gently let, let it uh, come back in into your belly with the out, um, breathing out the ha and the lips upward. And then we breathe in from the earth. Oomph. <laughs> okay, so let's do that together. So. Uh, taking in the energy from the earth and in breathing. Oomph. And again. Oh. Uh, So, we
we did that breathing um, and when you do it uh, well you your grounding is better nobody can push you <laughs> around so it's really really grounding so i know the few uh, the <laughs> more male part <laughs> I want so, to say my doggy is really astonished and is wondering what is going on here. <laughs> <laughs> and so are many others. <laughs> and now for the male part, we can do the standing or sitting, but let's do the sitting. Um, hunt the deer. And before we go into that, let's maybe take in what we've just done with an open mind and an open heart and an open body and just be with that for a moment. The nourishing of the baby or the project, almost like a rocking motion also, and then the beautiful grounding. And from here, we are first going to connect with the arrow the target and the hunter, hunting the deer. And let's start with the, with the target. And we're going to use our arms, our hands, and we're going to, with a movement like this, we're going to put our hands in front of us, far away from us. You can make an E sound. You are not, you're muted so nobody will hear you. <laughs> So um, it's very put to the point, that's the target. We know where it is, it's out there. Let's do that again. Like that we can focus on with our attention on that one point, it's outwards. With the masculine, our focus actualizing is we're going outwards into the world. We are hunting the deer, so we are seeking it. And once we find it, we know this is where the target is. So it's very specific. And relax. Relax. Let's go to the arrow. The arrow knows exactly where to go to. It knows it needs to go to that point. It's us as the hunter that allows it whether, whether it will reach the point or not. So as the arrow, move it from your body outwards. You are the arrow. Imagine you are that arrow and it goes out with a fish sound, like very fast. It knows where it's going. Nothing can stop it. It's unstoppable, but it goes outwards to that point. Outwards energy. Very strong force behind it. So when we are becoming the arrow in the bow, we can imagine this tremendous force going outwards towards that target. Just rest for a moment. Let's now connect to the human, the hunter. Searching, looking, the adrenaline becoming high, excited, when it spots a target, whatever it might be. Standing very short and focused on that target. Imagine you're holding a bow. You're holding firm on the front and you're holding back the bowstring and the arrow is in your bow and your eyes are on the target. And you are aware that you need to stand very still. And you begin to feel the tension as you pull back the bowstring, ready to release it to that point in front of you. Feel that tension, knowing that the arrow knows where it's going and you know where the target is. You might feel it in your belly, maybe not, doesn't matter. Pull it back and release it with whatever sound. And see it moving towards the target. You don't have to run after it. It knows where it's going. The masculine, the hunter. 
Shall we do that again as the hunter, holding the bow, feeling the tension of the arrow in the bow, trusting the arrow knows where it's going, and releasing that arrow and allow it to go out there, outwards. And just take a moment to be with these two energies, the one more nourishing, maybe more joyful in some way, and then the one ex more excited, adrenaline raced one of connecting with the target and allowing the arrow to go to find its target. The two different energies, complementary and harmonious. And just stay with that for a moment and let that integrate the power of both, not so much the action, but the power of both. And just be with that for a moment and breathe deeply into your body. And release and relax. And from the space, let's reconnect with our vision. And Victoria and Christine, you take a moment just to, whatever vision you have for the future, individually or collectively, whatever arises for you in this moment, you can bring that up. And for us others, our visions might have changed form or changed completely or expanded or evolved since last time. And let's just reconnect with our vision in whatever way feels good to us and comfortable using our senses and our awareness to just gently connect with that vision, to bring it into our awareness here in the space between us. And just feeling it. And celebrating it in your heart. It's chosen us to manifest through us in whatever way possible. And as you reconnect with your vision, gently begin to embody your vision by inviting it in. You can use body movements. You can call it to yourself into this moment. Or you can simply be with it. Holding it to yourself, embracing it, holding it close to your heart, bringing it here into this space. Nourishing it, cherishing it in your own way. The ability to hold it close to your body and to express and share it with others. To grant it life, to send it out into the world, to trust that it knows where it's going. Until there's no separation between you and your vision, you are your vision, become it in whatever way feels natural to you. And experience all its nuances and permutations and possible configurations. Whatever it's here to share with the world and humanity at this moment in time, here right now, in your space. And gently begin to expand your space to our collective space here, connecting to us all. And imagine it's a threat 
of a dream web that we are co-creating, co-weaving here together. No matter what the others, the details of the others visions are or whether it's a shared vision. Just imagine this collective web being birthed in this moment and your significance of your threat in this bigger web of life. Strong, powerful, significant. And just allow yourself to feel it, to sense it, and to experience it, this bigger web between us all, each of us unique and together creating this bigger one. And celebrate it, embrace it. And know it's life force ready to burst out into the world. And when you're ready, just relax. You're muted, Gertrud. When we feel into our that space of interwoven dreams and ask ourselves, what is the most powerful emergence that we feel right now to fulfill on this? dream or web of dreams to sense into it what is the most powerful emergence that we feel right now to fulfill on this dream or dream web and who's ready can start to share. I can start. I found it very interesting, the difference about the, of this uh, adrenaline and oxytocin energy. I was never aware how much I am in the feminine way and how little I am really in the focused way outside. And it really felt, it felt great, but uh, you know, I could see the difference or feel the difference quite, quite, quite well. And then for the vision, that was nice. I don't know if you remember, I saw this sort of tent space uh, uh, and underneath people moving or something. And today I saw, maybe first I thought it's me or the going out of the space on all sides. Later I thought, no, probably it's in a lot of people. 
And then I realized that these threats, which came from the middle, from the top, that they are coming with the people going out into the world, so that they are reconnected, rebound with that point up there, you know, and that was really maybe the most powerful thing I, I, I realized that you are safe and held, also you go out of this circumcised um, space, which before was sort of, you know, a cocoon. And I went out and I think everybody else with me went out in this bigger safe space, although it was somewhere dispersed. So, thank you. Uh, I would like to continue because I'm quite opposite. <laughs> I enjoyed the arrow and my heart widened and my chest was hot. <laughs> And I, but I'm a fighter, <laughs> and having been having given birth to two children, uh, I know that this is just to surrender to nature. Giving birth, it's you just surrender, and but the energy really comes when I <laughs> shoot the arrow. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, thinking about my vision, I, I couldn't remember my vision of last time, uh, but to me it became clear now that when I initiated the female integral field, it was a field. So it's the unified field of the female, that's my vision probably. And thanks to Heidi, uh, the virtual way, it really seems to manifest it in myself. I can only manifest my vision in my, by being myself. And I noticed that it's a different, a different manifestation now to about uh, 10 years ago. And yeah. Uh, knowing that each of us has the same energy, living energy, nourished by it, and each of us showing it individually in her own way. And that's what's so fascinating, that we are so different. And yeah. I want to thank you both. It's it's good to finally remember <laughs> what I'm after. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And thank you, Heidi, for the space again. Thank you. me it's as i was guiding you through that process of the arrow and the the, the deer uh, the hunt, hunting the deer and go through with you with the oomph and the ah <laughs> it's sort of i feel like i'm swinging between the two on where my focus is and as for my vision I, it's also a feeling in my body rather than something out there that I was after. It's really me becoming it more and more rather than chasing after it like I did many years before and spend many resources and time on it. And it's actually simply wonderful just to be it and to really day by day just being it. And as I was sensing into it, I just felt lots of heart energy. So it feel it felt like I'm on the right path. Thank you, Gertra. Thank you. I want to thank everybody because um, 
it's it's an amazing experience. I I had uh, I woke up very suddenly so that I'd be here on time. <laughs> I had an alarm. Um, and so I remember my dream from last night very vividly. I won't tell the dream because it would take too much time, but the upshot of the dream, I, I'm a concert violinist by profession. And uh, because my concerts are all on hold due to the virus pandemic, um, I've lost, completely lost my motivation to play. And so the last time I played was in February. And um, it, it felt like a vacation at first. And then the, in the last few months, it's been progressively getting more painful, but I still resist it. And so it's a kind of battle that's going on inside of me. And last night, the, the, or this morning, the, the, the dream that I was having was one of those dreams where every, everything is going wrong. I was trying to put together a concert and either my colleagues didn't know the music or my, my violin fell to pieces completely and I tried to repair it and it wouldn't repair. And anyway, lots of disasters, the usual kind of <laughs> nightmare. And I woke up feeling a sense of loss and, and uncertainty and um, even a kind of guilt. I don't know, I can't describe it. And it's totally amazing. I'm so grateful to all of you, to Heidi for inviting me and to, to you, Gertrude and Hanela. Um, all of a sudden in doing those embodied practices and also the meditation about the, the seed, all of a sudden I felt this surge coming up from the ground, um, from my feet, the surge of um, creative energy and a kind of vibrancy. And, and all of a sudden I realized that um, now it was now she's gone maybe you switch off the camera Victoria so we just can hear the sound I think she's frozen So, try again. <laughs> <laughs> I felt a very, uh, I got a very important insight that the, um, that in fact, I think what I love about my profession is the combination of the male and the female coming together. That in my performing, I feel like um, Monia. It's this kind of, I get this warmth and this energy and this kind of like, I, I want to go out there on stage and communicate and, and uh, express. But also, the, when I'm working on the music in preparation for a concert, it's, it's totally the, the nursing of the project, the, the nurturing, the oxytocin. And it feels very much as I felt um, with my daughter when she was, you know, when she was a baby and, and a young child. So I'm probably talking too much, but it was really um, so extraordinary. I, you know, it was heal completely healing and motivating. So thank you to all of you. Um, Victoria, that was interesting. I had, I'm not a performer, but I think that um, says it really well, the combination of the male and female in, in performance art. That's, that's a really interesting concept. I'm going to think about that. Um, I found the exercise of starting at our feet and kind of embodying the different parts of our body uh, very easy to um, sink into and um, that gave me a lot of energy just going through the body and recognizing each part from our feet to our head what role and, and what benefit we get from each part of our body and I really enjoyed that exercise. Um, I don't think I connected more with either the masculine hunter or the feminine um, uh, embodiment, uh, the, although the image of becoming fruit, uh, was pretty powerful. That, that was a good image to have. And, and it felt very real to me. Um, I liked both of those and, and could relate really to both of those aspects. I think I have a lot of both energies in me. 
um, but I'm trying to nurture more the feminine as I'm, you know, ending my career and the doing part of my life and being the busy person. Um, I'm, I'm coming to embrace more uh, the being person. Um, and I guess lastly, I didn't have a visual image so much that I could come up with like a picture in my head, but I had just a felt sense of, of um, world problems being a combination of male doing and figuring it out and problem solving along with or followed by the feminine healing and um, kind of recreating or uh, redo, re, not redoing, but recreating or healing after the problem has been solved. And my initial thought was um, excising the tumor that we have in the United States in the form of Donald Trump. And that's a very masculine doing, got to do something, got to act. You know, it requires acting and it requires aggression to uh, get rid of him. Um, but it has to be followed by healing. And there's a lot of healing that has to go on to reestablish kind of the body of the country. The country is hurting and, and has to go through a lot of healing to get back to its um, homeostatic or, or stable sense of what it had been before the tumor came along. And in some ways, COVID is also like that, a kind of this huge problem, and it has to be addressed with aggressive action and, and doing and, and problem solving with vaccines and all the science. Um, but, you know, we've all heard many times from many people that it's really the caring for each other um, and the healing that has to go on that is um, also essential. It, it can't all be done through science um, and the doing. There has to be another element of uh, nurturing each other. So that wasn't so much an image, but a felt sense that I came up with. Um, actually, I didn't see much and I'm not so sure about the last time, but it was very clear. It's, it's like, <laughs> we have to go on with this. And, and when, uh, Hanely, when you talked about the weaving, I could immediately feel it in my body. It was like, <laughs> as if something was yeah uh connecting or whatever that was and i'm for me adrenaline is almost toxic so it's really so it's like okay going out doing this and then coming back i had to breathe again so um this is really like this is my home base, the, the oxytocin, and going out for a specific thing, for a specific. So if everything is prepared, then doing it, but coming back to the home base. So that, that's my, um, yeah, and maybe the hunters did it as, <laughs> as well. <laughs> they were not hunting all the time. Yeah. And, and the connection, I, I felt the connection is the most important part. It's being me and at the same time connected. So what Haneli said, what many of you, it's here, but it's not only here. <laughs> it's kind of this interwoven, uh, this connected uh, part, um, yeah not to do it or to be it on my own. Yeah, and now we have a little time <laughs> constraint. So uh, we asked you if we could go a little bit over. So, I mean, 15 minutes over. And now let's look. We could do closing pretty soon. So we honor the 15 minutes over. 
but um, to to do the whole process that we that we prepared, it would go to half past. So I would like to know what what you think, and maybe is there anybody who doesn't want that to go further or? Yeah, just a short. I have to leave in about 10 minutes. I have 10 more minutes. 10 more minutes. Okay, so I, I think we should do a decent closing and we'll find another time to, to do the rest. Is that okay for you? So 10, 10 more minutes. Yeah. Okay, so let's <laughs> let's look. <laughs> Maybe we can give some questions or I, I will I will post the question. Imagine everything we need for fulfilling on this future is already here and our senses have access to it to be experienced. Even if it's not in the 3D world, it's not a table yet, <laughs> but it's really here already to be sensed. And feeling into this. And maybe carrying that with us for the next two weeks, that everything we need, everything to we, yeah, to need to manifest our vision, whatever that might be, and the interwoven one is already here. Yeah. And Hanili, do you want to do the appreciation round? And I have one more question to ask. <laughs> yeah? You can ask another question, yes? Okay. And we have a question for you to take on to the next time if you give if give us another <laughs> round to have a trilogy um, what is not holding you back what does not stop us from fulfilling we always ask the other way around so maybe that's a good question to to take into account Okay, so let's close. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you, everyone. <clears throat> and as usual, in the WeFlow also, we end with a, a round of appreciation for ourselves and for, the other, for any one of the others. And just also feeling this combined energy of what we just experienced, expressed in whatever comes through us. Gertrud, would you like to start? You can, you can go. As I sense into this beautiful combined energy, I'm deeply grateful and appreciative of all of you who have given us this chance to play with you in a different way and doing something that we're not used to and to be so open and receptive to it. And also this beautiful field that has been carrying me the last two weeks. 
Thank you. Yeah, to make it more clear what we are talking about, and thank you so much, Hanili, yeah, is the question, um, your take, take away from today's session, and what do you acknowledge in yourself, and what qualities you want to appreciate in someone here? Maybe Christine, you start so you're sure to <laughs> to have enough time. Um, I, I guess I go back to the image of the mother, which is where I started uh, this session, describing the time with uh, my family being um, reunited for a period of time, um, and I'm I'm still filled with that experience, and. Today, though, in this past hour, hour and a half, just feeling like I have five new mothers <laughs> that have birthed me along this process today and just feeling very um, connected and appreciative of everybody showing up um, and giving of themselves. Uh, and that was, it just struck me that, um, all of us are mothers to each other. Thank you. Well, I feel like a grandmother, <laughs> which means I don't expect anything. You don't have to do anything. I just love you the way you are. This is what I really enjoy about being a grandmother. And it's an unconditional love. And I'm glad I got old enough to live it. And I appreciate your being here and your openness and your self-reliance. So you really, there is, in each of you is, there is something, a core uh, that's very solid, and I'm very glad about that. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. <clears throat> yes, I just want to express my gratitude again to everybody, and um, as a side note, um, my own mother died a year ago and um, we had a very turbulent relationship and this experience today um, made clear a lot of a lot of the the issues I've been dealing with after her death so I appreciate that and um, sometimes it was so difficult with my own mother that I thought of myself as a misogynist <laughs> because <laughs> I was so afraid of women <laughs> and um, and professionally I've usually been in groups that are all men because uh, you know that I hope that's going to change more women will go into music um, you will, you know from Monia from the Wiener Philharmoniker <laughs> what, what a struggle it is um, but now I was I feel so grateful I realize I, I've been able to embrace what in me is feminine and realize that 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 you are affirming that and we are affirming that in each other. And like Christine said, um, we, I feel like uh, I, I, I have, I have you as, as um, I don't want to say mothers because I don't, um, I, it, that, <laughs> I'm thinking of my mother, um, as nurturers, as nurturers with what Monia said, the unconditional love and the support and, um, and, and I think that um, Hanali's um, meditation about the appreciation of our own bodies, that's been another big issue for me. Um, and it's been a struggle, self-compassion. And now I feel like I can start on that path. And, um, and I, I sense the strength that all of you have, the, the, the 
um, the, the inner core of strength, like Monia said, that, and I feel supported by that. And I hope, I hope that I can um, support you too and nurture you in, in your achievement of your visions. Thank you so much. Yeah, I sincerely appreciate that you are joining me in these sessions and also what is coming out of it because now you both, Gertraud and Hanneli, you have taken the initiative in doing this and I'm so glad because, you know, that's the ultimate thing I, I wanted to create is co-creation and also connection. And I'm sure Christine and Victoria, you will meet soon and, and, and have created another connection. That's, that's so, you know, that's so satisfying for me. And I appreciate in you the willingness to be here and to explore things together with me. Give me the possibility that I'm connected to, to the world, because otherwise, as I said often, I would be buried here <laughs> in my surrounding. And um, yeah, I'm very thankful and also for the new insights I get. And I'm also so happy that I don't have to lead all the time. You know, it's really great. And if somebody else will take over after you have done your trilogy, <laughs> I will be happy. <laughs> yeah. uh, thank you, Heidi. And, um, I am, um, yeah, I acknowledge Haneli and myself for for having so much fun preparing that and and really getting like, oh, <laughs> we could even do even more and uh, let's do maybe a seminar together and, you know, like it's bubbling up. And um, yeah, and I want to ask if, if that's okay, if we take another and then we <laughs> you recuse ourselves and everybody, somebody else can take over, but uh, yeah, I want to ask. Is it okay for you? Uh, but I will be away on vacation in two weeks. So we leave if, if provided that Corona is not getting worse. <laughs> yeah, let's do the planning after the recording. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to know if that's okay. And I, I appreciate each and every one of you. I, I, it's so great to meet you, Victoria. And, uh, Hanley, it was such a joy with working with you. And I was thinking of the, there is a flower meadow in the front yard of a house, a very big one for the bees. And I thought, where are those flowers? When Monia said, no, I'm, I'm completely the opposite. And so, yeah, how beautiful flowers we are in all colors and all shapes and forms and so I'm I'm really really grateful yeah. so thank you and have a wonderful time and uh, vacation <laughs> and concert next one or joy of playing <laughs> first <laughs> Yeah, and Heidi, as always, thank you for that space. Without you, we wouldn't be here. So I'm complete. Before I'm closing out, Hanneli, I think you need yeah. to say <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's, there are actually no words to really sometimes express. Just this beautiful thing being with you. And thank you, Heidi, for this incredible time together every second week and enjoying your summers and vacations and being so open. And I specifically felt you girls, the last two weeks, incredible on so many different levels. And now as we're concluding the session, I cannot really explain my gratitude. 
for the space and for each of you and the beautiful unconditional love that you so gratefully share with all of us and for myself. It's something that I look forward to every week. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, everybody. And as, as I heard, we will meet again in two weeks and continue this journey. So, wonderful. <laughs>